Hello everyone, <laughs> this is a slightly uh, different news video, obviously usually Lee would be uh, live doing this, uh, but I thought that maybe I'd give it a try, obviously due to him working all the time, uh, he's, he's rarely got time to do actually little bits of news and whatsoever, and obviously as you guys know, I'm a Man United fan, so originally I thought it probably wouldn't make sense for me to cover Leicester City news, but then I realised, you know what? At the end of the day, it's not hard for any fan to go on the internet and, and have a look what's what's going on. And um, yeah, for all the Leicester City fans that are going to be in the chat, cause I'm, I think I'm going to make it a premiere like I did with the Winksy Roundup stuff, but obviously this is going to work a little bit better. Um, let me know what you think because this coming summer, it, it's looking good for you boys. There's a lot of, um, a lot of players being linked to the club. Um, and, <laughs> and as you can see in front of you, um, this is not Lee. Well, it is Lee, but it, it's uh, I've got a little animation with a devil face. Obviously, the devil face relating to United, which probably most of you don't want to see. But I thought I want to try and make it a little bit more animated compared to the other one where it was just a, a still setup. So I'm going to obviously use this for when I'm talking and then I'll switch to, to whatever um, when I'm explaining a transfer or whatever. So anyway, yeah, let's get straight into it. Um, Leicester have actually been linked to, to a lot of uh, players this summer, as I said before, just a second ago. So Leicester City have been linked with the summer swoop for Hungary international defender Attila Zilai. The Fenerbahce centre-back has emerged as a transfer target for the Foxes, according to Hungary outlet Blick. Uh, Zilai only joined the Turkish club in January, signing from Crip. Riot output Apollon Limassol for a reported fee of 1.8 million and putting pen to paper on a four and a half year contract. But he's now claimed that Leicester are keen on the 23 year old who started out at a rapid Vienna in Austria. So, obviously, first of all, um, you, you guys are probably going to be saying we don't really need a centre back. Um, but obviously, because you've got Suyuncu, you've got Fofana, you've got Evans. But a lot of your defenders, coming from a Man United point of view, a different, a different fan's perspective. Um, you know, they're, they're quite injury prone. And and for this guy, he's going to be coming into a Premier League team. He's only young, bear in mind, 23 years old. And he's only young and he's going to be wanting to, you know, he will be happy to sit on, on the bench for the meantime while your players are playing. Say if one gets injured, he'll hop straight in and he looks like a really good player. The downside to this is that he only joined the, that club in January, signing from Crips, your output of Poland, like I said before. Uh, but... Leicester are keen on the 23-year-old and, um, yeah, anything could happen. So, Fenerbahce apparently slapped a 25 million euro price tag on the player. So, that in English terms is around 21.5 million. So, it's quite a hefty fee for a player which isn't proven in the Prem. And I think Leicester have um, kind of took a little bit of a downfall in the past from signing players from foreign, foreign places and um, then becoming a little bit of a flop. Uh, obviously, Slomani kind of rings a bell. Um, but at the same time as well, you, you boys have also done really well with transfers and turning nobodies into somebody. So, you know what? This guy could be the thing. Uh, it's a quite a hefty, uh, you know, price tag. So, uh, obviously, you boys are very good at breaking records. And this might be another one you are willing to break. So, Blick says, which is obviously the Turkish news uh, media, says that if this valuation is met from Leicester that player would become the most expensive Hungarian footballer of all time. So, yeah, that is quite a, you know, quite a tag to bring to, to the Prem. And, again, a little bit worrying because for a player to carry that, you know, he's the most expensive Hungarian player. To come into the Prem, the best league in the world, arguably, which, you know, I think it is, it, it, is, it could it have a little bit of an effect on his performances. You know, I, I don't think so because I've actually had a look at, some of the games he's been playing and he looks really strong and um and quite up for the the physical side of the prem so i don't think it would really affect him but you know who knows you know these these kind of things could happen so obviously that record is currently held by a fellow hungarian which is dominic zobazalai who joined rb leipzig from rb salzburg for 20 million euros so um yeah that's actually a player which leicester are also linked to but um obviously leicester mercury which is what i'm on now uh, suggested this is probably more likely. 
So um, Sazalai has more than 100 senior club appearances. So quite a lot of appearances, although they are obviously in the lower leagues, which is not the Prem. So, you know, there's a 50-50 side to that. Uh, today he's made 13 appearances for Fenerbahce, who are currently second in the Turkish Super League. So, um, yeah, I, th- I think it looks promising. And, and you know what? To have a backup centre-back again, who, you know, could come into the squad, be really good for you boys. And do you know if, if Evans or, you know what, Evans is getting old, isn't he? And do you know if he goes or Sayonji gets another injury or Fafana gets another injury, this guy is, you know, he's, he's going to be up for it. He's obviously a Hungarian um, and he's, he's been pretty much around the world already. He's obviously playing in Turkey right now. And um, yeah, I think it, it could be promising. I mean, with the injuries that you guys are facing, to have a backup player who, you know, is pretty good. And, and as I said, you guys are really good at turning players from nobodies to somebodies. And this, this could be the perfect opportunity. Um, he, he's played in all three World Cup qualifiers against Poland, San Marino and Adora, uh, obviously this season. And, um, and yeah, obviously your, your current central defender options are Johnny Evans, Wesley Fofana, Kaglos Sunju and Wes Morgan. Uh, obviously, Brendan Rodgers has played three at the back t- at times this season, uh, where the likes of Daniel Amati, Christian Fuchs and James Justin have also filled in. And also Wilfred Ndidi has filled in, which really, you know, um, Ndidi isn't a defender and he's been he's been forced to play as the defender before. Um, Christian Fuchs, again, he's not a centre-back and he's been forced to play that position at times before. Um, so, you know, this guy, if you've got him, if you sign him, he can come in and, and stop your, the players that are usually in a different position from taking that position and he can be that position for when uh, the likes of Fafana or Evans or Sunchu are injured. So, yeah, I, th- I think it, it could be really good for you boys. And at the end of the day, it's never bad to have, you know, plenty of backups. I mean, if you look at Man City, they've got at least two or three teams. It's ridiculous. Like, you know, if, if one of their players get injured, they don't really get, you know, damaged from it because they've got a whole two different squads on the, on the substitutes bench and in the reserves. So it's uh, definitely, definitely a promising move for you boys. So I've actually got some more news for you guys, some more transfer news for a right winger. Obviously, Sengi Zunda was brought in to try and uh, attempt to place that missing piece of Riyad Mahrez for when he left you. Uh, there's been a couple of attempts, including, off the top of my head, including Sengi Zunda, obviously, uh, what's his name, Gazelle, uh, and Perez, who, who's also been trying to take that right wing position. So Leicester Mercury have actually said that Brendan Rodgers isn't comfortable playing Perez in that right wing position as he thinks he fits that more central attacking midfield role. Um, so anyway, Leicester Sheer Live has actually said for a fourth successive summer, Leicester City will try to replace arguably the most technically gifted player in their history, which obviously links to Riyad Mahrez. When written out like that, it perhaps un- is understandable that their first three attempts at filling the void left by Riyad Mahrez have not quite worked out. So obviously that is... Rahib Gazelle, a very literal replacement for Mahrez in that he is too left-footed. Um, and obviously, he was quite weak when he was playing for you boys. He didn't really look that comfortable in the Prem. Obviously, Senga Zundo, who had a really good start, doesn't seem like he's cutting it anymore. Obviously, he's out of favour for Brendan Rodgers. And then obviously, Ayuzi Perez, which I quickly, briefly mentioned for now, Brendan Rodgers is playing more in a, in a camp position. So, um, basically, Leicester, obviously, back in the market for a right winger. So a player's name has popped up again for you boys, who has actually uh, been linked to you before, and that is the World Cup winner, Florian Torvin. Uh, firstly, he's available on a free transfer. So, you know, with COVID and stuff going on, money's not flying around as it used to be. And to bring in a player for free, and he could turn out to be really good, you know, that's a, a massive thing for Leicester again. And, and I'm sure you'd be praised for it if he does turn out to be good. If he turns out to be bad, you've got a player for free. Obviously, you're only paying his wages. If he, he's asking for ridiculous wages, then that yeah, that's a little bit more of a problem. But by the looks of it, he's not asking for that much. So if he does flop, I don't think it'll be that much of a problem. Um, on the downside, uh, he's actually been proven to, to fail in the likes of the Premier League before. Uh, as he was signed for Newcastle. So that's obviously going to be a massive turn off for you boys before. Because obviously Perez came from Newcastle and he's not been that great. And I actually remember Lee... Uh, pointing out that he's never going to buy from Newcastle again or he never wants the club to buy from Newcastle again. Obviously, he's not you know, playing for Newcastle anymore, but he, he's proven to fail in the grade of Premier League. 
Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a 50-50. Um, I want you guys to let, let me know below. Obviously, he comes as a free. The next person I'm, I'm about to mention in a minute isn't a free, and he's young and he's got quite a, a you know, a hefty fee behind his name. But you know, Florian, he, he's coming for free if you do choose to sign him. He, he could, you know, rise up to the occasion and and do something. But on the other hand, he's he's failed in the prem before. Um, he, he might ask for a little bit more than you want in wages. It doesn't say anything about his wages, unfortunately, but. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a 50-50 and I'm not sure Leicester fans really want that. They want players to come in and, and do well off the start, off the bat. So a name which actually might make a couple more Leicester fans more interested is Francisco Trincao, the man the Foxes chased with some enthusiasm before signing under last season, so last summer. The Portuguese youngster showed off his talent at Braga and earned a move to Barcelona. He'd only been there a couple of months when City made their move and the Catalans giants said no. So obviously the difference between last summer and this summer is the impact of coronavirus hasn't affected uh, the teams as much at that time. And obviously I believe Barcelona are currently uh, in £1 billion of debt. So the simple answer is they need cash. Um, and it says here, uh, Trinkero may have played 37 times in all competitions, but he has only started twice in Liga with Barca, Boss, Ronald, Koeman and Shaw how to get the best out of him. He's not become a bad player overnight. He's scored a brace on one of those two La Liga starts and City will feel like they can get the best out of him. So I've already praised you guys enough um, through this news video. And I've said, you are astonishing at turning players from nobodies into somebodies. I personally think all this guy needs is a little bit of confidence, a couple of starts under his belt and he could be something really incredible. Uh, so let's see Mercury says here that City have not lost interest in Trincao and may find Barcelona more receptive. It will be an exciting signing, much like when a skinny Algerian with blonde highlights rocked up from Le Havre. City would then hope the transfer is as fruitful, obviously linking to Riyad Mahrez, um, and obviously saying that they're quite similar in the playing styles. So, you know what? I think if it was up to me, I'd go for the young, the younger player, because he's got time to you know develop into a Premier League team. Whereas unlike um, the other player I mentioned above, Florian Torvin, He's obviously proven to fail in a Premier League team like Newcastle, which again is not, you know, the same as Leicester City. It's Newcastle. They're, they're completely different levels of uh, of expectations. But, you know, I, I'd go with someone who's young, not had experience in the Prem, to then, you know, get develop into a Premier League side and become a really good Premier League uh, player. So that's all I've got for now. Um, I'm going to ask Lee if I can do this a couple more times a week, obviously, because I want to keep you guys informed a little bit more. Uh, Lee's really busy at the minute. I think he, he told me that he's got a couple of weeks off soon, so hopefully a lot of content's going to come in that couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, if, if Lee's happy for me to continue doing this and just keep giving you a couple of little little news here and there, I'm, I'm happy to do it. I mean, as I said, I'm a Man U fan. You can choose not to believe me. This is all off the Leicester Mercury, but I'm not going to be telling you lies. Um it's weird because like doing this channel, it's almost like I'm 50-50 I'm now. I know a lot about Leicester and I know a lot about Man U. So it's very strange. But yeah, that, that's, all, um, that's all that's been reported so far. There's a couple of little mini li links, which I'm not going to mention too much on because obviously they're not really that reliable. Um, obviously, Ketter's actually, believe it or not, Liverpool's Ketter, Keter, however you pronounce him. He's been linked to, to Leicester as he's on his way out of Liverpool. I think Klopp subbed him in the first half of the Champions League game they lost the other day. So, um, yeah, there's been a couple of links with him. But um, if I hear anything more on that or any more development, I'll try and do a video on it. Um, but, yeah, apart from that, this, it, that's about it. So there's three players throughout the video I've mentioned. Obviously, the, the centre-back and those two right-wingers. So um, who do you think? What, what do you think Leicester need to go for most? Obviously, centre-back being your centre-back's been quite injury-prone and this guy could come in and be really good for you. Or a right winger, which you've always needed for a very long time as Under's not been performing and other players that you've brought in have not been that great, including Perez and Gazelle. Um, so, yeah, I, I personally think that you boys need to go and go for a, a right winger before a centre-back. But that centre-back, I'm telling you, he's, he's looking really good. And, and for centre-backs that you have that are injury-prone, to take that position when they're injured is, you know, looking very good for you. So uh, that's all I've got for now. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more of these news videos, let me know and uh, I'll try and sort them more, all out. I hope you enjoyed a little bit more of the kind of animation 
rather a little bit more of moving around rather than just a still setup. And yeah, I'll see you in the next watch along, guys. Take care. See you soon. Fox is never quick.